Hi, welcome back to our CHM YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for joining us here each and every week. It is a, a privilege. It is an honor to be able to share God's heart with you every week. And if this is your first time, then we say welcome to our CHM YouTube channel, uh, which we also call Wednesday's Word. And it is an uh, opportunity and an avenue that God uses for us to minister his heart to you each and every week. And we believe that if you hear, you have been divinely led by God to this channel today, and there will be something in this message from his heart to you. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what God has prepared for us today. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And really, we've been kind of celebrating for the whole month of June, and it's been just a lot of fun. That is what's on God's heart right now for his people to be uh, in expectation, to be excited about what is coming, not what's happening around us. There are things happening around us that we don't even see reason or cause to celebrate. But God tells us we have to be able to look at the things that are not seen instead of looking at the things that are seen. So we're going to look at a few more things that we're going to be excited about it. Um, we started back on the first of this month when we celebrated our CHM YouTube channel uh, half birthday. We actually started this channel back on December the 1st. And so on June 1st, we celebrated our six months, which is our half birthday. And then I think the following week, we celebrated Pentecost, which is the birthday of the church. And the excitement that came with the Holy Spirit coming into the earth for the first time. And how he gave birth to the church, which radically changed the world, even still today. So we celebrated that. Then last week, we kind of began to look at some of the things God said that we were going to be um, celebrating in the days and weeks to come. We went back and looked at uh, a couple of the prophetic words and promises that God had given us early on in the year. And he took us back to some of those things and let us know that now is the time where they will be coming into manifestation. Uh, he told me then um, that we were coming into the days of fulfillment. And that word fulfillment, as we said, it means to bring something into actuality to bring something into effect or to make it real. So the things that we had heard God say, we heard him say, we've been believing God for, we've been confessing out of our mouth. God says now those things are gonna to begin to come into fulfillment. They're gonna to begin to come into actuality. They're gonna to begin to come into effect and they're gonna to begin to come in and become real. So they become our reality. What was once just a hope and a dream, what was invisible, that now in these days, they're going to begin to come into actuality, into fulfillment, and they will be reality. And they will be seen not just by us, by the eyes of faith, but they will be seen by those around us as a testimony to the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And so that's what we've been kind of going over for this month of June. And as I was seeking the Lord about what he wanted me to share with you all today, um, I was really excited as he began to share with me what he said was, he said, the next six months will reveal the past six months. And I was like, okay, Lord, what, what are you saying? And he brought to mind this scripture, and I'm going to share it with you. And it is one that we have shared at some point. I think it was back in January when we were talking about um, making sure that we, were, we wanted to take the benefit of the reset. We wanted to make sure that we were doing everything we needed to do so that we can reap the full benefits of the time of reset. And so the particular scripture that he gave me then and brought back to me now is um, Galatians chapter six. And it starts at verse seven, verses seven and eight. And it says, God will never be mocked for what you plant will always be the very thing that you harvest. Verse eight says, the harvest that you reap reveals the seed that you planted. And that's what the Lord was saying. The seeds we've been busy sowing over the past six months. If you remember, guys, I was saying to you all, make sure that you're diligent to guard your heart. Make sure that you are diligent to sow the seeds that you want to reap a harvest on in your life. Because when we get to uh, about the mid-year, early June, we were going to begin to see these things come into fruition. And so that's what we're beginning to see now. And so that's what the Lord said. He said the next six months from July to December will reveal what we've been doing from January to June. So that's exciting, or I guess it may be a little scary depending on what we've been doing. 
And but what the Lord brought to mind is actually uh, something that I shared with you all again back in January. It's a passage from a book that I was reading then, and he had me to share it with you all as well as my Wednesday night class. And it's from the book As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And that passage uh, in that book says, A man's mind may be likened unto a garden, which can be intelligently cultivated, or it can just be allowed to run wild. But whether it's cultivated or whether it's neglected, it must and it will be and will bring forth. And so when that's saying is we if we take the time to um, cultivate the garden of our minds, it's going to bring what we cultivate. But if not, it's going if we just let it run wild and you can see that driving down any street in the community, you can look at the lawn of a home. You can look at the yard or the lawn of a home and you can pretty much tell who's living inside of it. If that lawn is kept and if it's, if it's uh, mold and if it's edged and if it's kept up, you can tell the type of mindset that's in that home. But then the same is true when you ride down the street and you see the wild weeds and the grass six feet tall and trees and limbs everywhere. You can kind of tell the mindset of the person that's living in that home as well. So it goes on to say whether we uh, intelligent, intelligently cultivate that mindset or we just let it run wild either way it's going to bring forth it's going to bring forth whatever we are allowing it to happen in that mind so it says um if no useful seeds are put into that mind or into that garden then an abundance of useless weed seeds will fall in and they will continue to bring about according to their seeds and so it says just as a gardener cultivates his plot keeping it free of weeds, growing the flowers or the fruit that they require, so can a man tend the garden of his mind. Weeding out all of the old negative, useless, impure thoughts and cultivating toward perfection the flowers or the fruit that they want to receive in their life. By pursuing this process of purposely or intelligently cultivating it or just letting it run wild by going and cultivating this process a man will sooner or later discover that he himself is the gardener of his mind he is the he is the gardener of his mind he's the gardener of his soul he is the director of his life he is also he will also reveal to himself um, the flaws of his thoughts whether he's been guarding his mind, cultivating his mind, making sure he's pulling out the unwanted elements, whether or not he's been doing those things, it's going to reveal either the fruit or it's going to reveal the flaws of that thought, that thought life. And it, it will bring understanding and it will bring an ever increasing accuracy, meaning that whatever seeds you sow is what's going to come out with, with accuracy. So we're not going to be able to sow seeds of oranges and then expect to reap apples. And on the same note, you can't sow evil thoughts and expect to receive a good harvest. That's simply not how it works. It goes on to say, the thought which a man has built into his character has brought him to this place. So every man is where he is by law of his being. Every person is where they are in their life by law of their thoughts. You know, that scripture says that as a man thinketh, as a person thinking in their heart and in their mind, that is what they are. And so we were talking back in January and probably some of February as well, um, that we want to make sure that we're being diligent and intentional to guard our hearts and guard our minds and be intentional about sowing this, the seeds of God word into our minds and into our hearts. Otherwise, if we're not intentional about sowing God's word and God's seeds, then the wind can blow your enemy's crazy thoughts. You know, people influence us by the company we're around. And so we want to be purposeful and intentional. And what God is saying now, that these next, next six months of the year are going to reflect, are going to reveal what we sow. And that's what the scripture said in Galatians chapter 8. It said that whatever seed you sown is the crop that you're going to reap. It says that verse 8 says the harvest that you reap reveals the seeds that you planted. And there's no way to get around it. It said God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. Whatever you sow is what we're going to reap. So it's an exciting time. It is an exciting time when we know that we have been diligent. We've been doing the things that God have instructed us to do. And we have been keeping hope alive. And we have been purposely and intentionally sowing the good seeds that we want to receive a harvest on. 
But I also hear the spirit saying, because I do realize that none of us are perfect. I do realize that we have um, perhaps even just stopped, forgot all about it. I do realize that many probably have just listened to these prophetic words and have heard them and thought, oh, that's good, that's exciting, and then walked away and didn't really do it. And so the Lord was telling me as I was putting my notes together, he said, Cynthia, I want you to tell my people the spirit of God came on me. And I really began to pray in the spirit because I felt his heart for you, for his people. And he said, I want you to tell my people that I hear their heart. I hear their questions. I hear their concern. I hear their wondering and their pondering. I hear them wondering, Lord, did I do enough? God, did I get it right? Did I sow the right seeds? Lord, did I pull out all the weeds? God, have I done everything? Because you know what? It's harvest time. And what the Lord wanted me to share with you all as we wrap it up today. did Because he feels the concern on your heart. Or he feels perhaps a conviction on your heart. When you know you haven't done the things that you should do. And the scripture says when we know what is right to do and then we choose not to do it, that's sin. And so the Lord led me to this last scripture and I'm going to leave you with this. And I thank God for mercy. I thank him for grace and compassion. In Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 and through 16. And I'm going to read it in the amplified version because it's, it expresses his heart so clearly. And the scripture says, verse 14, it says, Inasmuch then as we, the believer, have a great high priest who has already ascended into the heavens and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God. So because Jesus is our high priest, he has already passed through into the heavens and he's in the realm with God. And there's another scripture that says in Romans, I believe it is, that said Jesus is always interceding on behalf of the saints. When we don't get it right, when we don't do all that we should do, Jesus is interceding on our behalf. But it goes on to say that Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, the Son of God, because we have him as our high priest, he tells us then, let us hold fast to our confession of faith when be, that we should tenaciously hold on to our confession of faith, absolutely trusting in Jesus as our Savior. Regardless of whether or not we got it all right, regardless of whether or not we've crossed every T and dotted every I, whether we have, um, have done all the things that we feel like we should have done, we can hold fast to the, to the fact that Jesus is our Savior. And that is a finished work. Verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weakness and our temptation. It's saying Jesus knows, he understands the struggle we have. We're trying to get up and do everything the way he, he requires or desires us to do every day. He understands, it goes on to say that Jesus has been tempted knowing exactly how it feels to be human. He knows and understands the temptation we go through. He knows and understands the struggle. He knows and understands when we just don't even fight. We just give in to the temptation. He knows and he understands and it says in every respect, he's been tempted as we are. But the difference is he's without sin. The difference is he didn't give in to it. The difference is he didn't just uh, lay down on the job. Jesus was able to continue even though he went through every bit of temptation that we experienced. It says that Jesus went through it without committing any sin. Verse 16 says, and therefore then, because Jesus is our high priest, because he knows what it means to be human, because he knows the struggle and the temptation that we go through, he went through every bit of it, but he didn't see him. He knows what it's like. And so verse 16 says, therefore, let us, with the privilege that he's given us, approach the throne of grace. We don't come to him in our own righteousness because we don't have any. We don't come to him in our own truth because we don't have any. But we come before the throne of grace in Jesus' name, in his righteousness. He is the one who's experienced everything that we've been through but is without sin. And because he is our high priest, we can come before God in his name. And it says that we then approach the throne of grace in Jesus' name. That is the throne of God's gracious favor. And we come with confidence and without fear. We don't come confident in ourselves. We come confident in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We come confident in him 
as our savior. And because he has completely saved us and completely paid redemption's price in full, then we don't have to come shaking and scared knowing, God, I messed up. I didn't get it right and I didn't stick through the process. And now we're coming into the time where everything I've been doing over the past six months, now it's going to manifest and everybody's going to see it. God said, but wait, you're coming in his name. And when you come, I see his finished work. When you come, I see the blood. I don't see your mistakes. I don't see your sin. I don't see your error. I don't see where you got off track. I see the finished work of Jesus Christ. And because of that, he said we can come boldly before the throne of grace without fear so that we can receive mercy. We receive mercy, not judgment. I thank God that mercy triumphs judgment. I thank God that mercy is greater than his wrath. I thank God that when we come to the throne of grace, we receive mercy. We receive mercy. The Amplified Bible says, I love it. The Amplified Bible says we receive mercy for our failures. We receive mercy for our shortcomings, our downfalls. We get mercy, not judgment, not criticism. We get mercy. And we receive mercy for our failures and we find his amazing grace. He gives us his grace to help in our time of need. And the Amplified Bible says, and we receive an appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. Thank God for this word, for this promise. As I was preparing that message, God said, I want you to tell my people because I know they're a little concerned. I know they feel a little anxious because now it's payday so to speak. Now is the harvest time and now they're going to reap what they've sown and many in fear are concerned and afraid but God said no. Jesus has paid the price and so I'm going to give them according to what he has done in their life. And so God today we thank you. We honor you. We exalt your name. We glorify you God and we understand and acknowledge oh God that it is because of your great mercy that we have not been consumed. It is because your compassion fail not, but is new every single morning and great is your faithfulness. Father, today we thank you that Jesus Christ is our high priest. And Lord, he, had, he knows what it is to be human. He knows and understand intimately and personally what it is to be tempted, what it is to be rejected, what it is to be hurt, what it is to be talked about. Jesus knows and he went through every bit of it, God, without sinning. And God, I thank you that it is his great reward that we will receive. It is his blood that covers my sin. It is his blood that covers our downfalls. It is his blood that removes our failures, God. You said that you will set our sins as far as the east is from the west. And it is because Jesus Christ is our high priest. And God, today I thank you that as our high priest, he is seated in your right hand right now ever interceding on our behalf and so god today for myself personally and lord for everyone that will hear this word god i thank you that we will receive the greatness of your reward we expect the great we expect the blessing we expect an abundant harvest god of increase and favor and strength overflowing in our life because he who promised is faithful. So we will continue to confess God. To hold fast to our confession of faith. Because he who promised is faithful. And so God we stand on your word. And we expect the great. Because you are the greatest one. And the greater one living in us. God is the one who is able to do it. And so we thank you for it today. In Jesus name. Listen, thank you guys so much again for joining us. We are excited at the things that God are doing, the things that are about to manifest. Listen, I want you, I know God is going to do it. I don't have any doubt in my mind, but I want you not to be stingy with your testimony. If you know God has done something in your life as a result of you hearing these words and as a result of you lining up and obeying, then I want you to share it because it's for God's glory. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. It's all for God's glory. So I want you to set any personal thoughts aside concerning me. And I want you to give God the glory that you know he is due. Because he blesses us so that we will tell our story for him to get the glory. Amen. Listen, love you guys. I'll see you all next week. Shalom.